Hello biologists, we are looking at biodiversity 4.2.1 from the OCR specification for A-level biology. Looking at specification point D, which is using Simpson's index of diversity, using the given formula in your exam and being able to interpret what the results show you. So in the last video we had a look what species richness is and we concluded it's the number of species within a habitat. Um, however, this does not take into account the number of individuals of each species also known as species evenness. Um, so that is exactly what Simpson's index of diversity does. So Simpson's index of diversity allows you to measure species evenness, where the small n is the number of individuals of a particular species and the big n represents the total number of all individuals of all species. So I'm going to show you an example of that in a second. But when you, when you run that formula, you will get a number um, and the numbers go between 0 and 1. If the number is closest to 1, you have a high Simpson's index of diversity. And this means that you have a high biodiversity, you have a high species richness and a high species evenness. You also, This also means that because you have this high species richness and evenness, that the ecosystem is more stable and more likely to be able to withstand a change. This is in a red box because it is taken directly from the mark scheme. So if you think, if this is what it means, if there's a high number, a high Simpson's index of diversity, uh, if there is a low Simpson's index, this means the change in one species is likely to affect the whole habitat, that the ecosystem is unstable and unlikely to withstand a change. It can also mean that it's dominated by one species. So for example, where you have oak woodland, um, obviously it's dominated by mainly oak. Therefore, if the change within the oak species occurs, it could wipe out the whole um, habitat. It could also have more of an impact on keystone species as well that support the whole ecosystem. So an example of one of these formulas, if you want to pause it and have a go, this is how you should lay it out. So you should have your species down one side and then you should have N, which is the number of those species. For, exa for example, there are three grayling, 11 large heath, etc., etc. You would add them all up. So you've got a total number, which is the big N. And then you would do three divided by the big N, 11 divided by the big N, etc., etc., to get this second column. Now you need to make sure that in this column that all of these numbers are to the same decimal places and the same with this one. You need to make sure that they're all to the same decimal places within this column. So all they've done here is literally square the number in this column. So they square it to get this number all the way down. So you square it and then the sum here, what you're going to do here is just add up all of these numbers here in this last column. And then the key step, which a lot of people forget is that you're doing one take away this sum here to give you the overall answer. So if you want to have a go at that, pause it and have a go. The mark scheme is on the next page. So have a go first. And then this is what we should have got. Sorry, this is what we should have got there. So that's the number for the large heath. And then we take away this number from one to get this. Okay, here is another example. And again, it follows the same principle in terms of the layout. We have the number of individuals of each, spe each species, which we need to add up here to get the total of big N. We then do 40 divided by our total of big N and we'd square that number to get this one here. So once you've got all of these squared numbers here, once you've squared all of this column to get fill out this one, we'd add them all together using, that's what sigma means there, sum of, add them all together, and then we do one take away all of this in that box there. So like I've said, you, you, this, this formula is provided for you in the exam. You just need to be able to use it. And the way we use it is by laying it out in these columns like so. And don't forget that the number of decimal places must be the same within the column, must be the same within the column. Um, so here is another example of an, an exam question. If you want to pause it and have a go, you do need to know the difference between species richness and species evenness, which was the specification point C. So pause that one and have a go. You do need to know, like at the bottom here, the implications of a low and a high number. So this one's asking us about a low Simpson's index. The previous question was asking about was a high. Okay, so that is a specification point. Guys, just plenty of practice with these, plenty of exam question papers on this and plenty of practice to refine your techniques and good luck with your exams.